Mr. Lang bought it in 1941. They were short of engines, so they bought this yep. engine and rebuilt it, uh, and they got good use out of it. Yep. Anyway, I wish it a ded dedication. They had a big crowd over here, and uh, Harold Nelson was a traveling engineer, and he pulled a whistle for the last call. And the whistle had been silent ever since. And that was in 1956. Yeah. That lever right there. especially you'd have to have it open on the back otherwise it would condense and freeze. This line we didn't have radios years ago so the conductor would whistle a couple times and that would create a whistle in the cab and different whistles would give you different messages. You'd have to meet at the next station, uh, slow up at some place or so we had all kinds of communication be like a Morse code and this is that this one this holes here this is just a regular train line hose, and this gives you all the brakes for all the cars that's connected to the grid. It goes back there at least uh, 12 feet, and this is an apron over here. This apron here, the coal would come up through underneath, and it would come up around and just keep pushing it up. And the firemen would set these valves over here, and there's jets over here, so the jets would force the coal even all over. If you didn't get an even bed out there, what would happen, you'd get cold spots and then you wouldn't have an efficient fire. So your job was to make sure that that coal got distributed even. Up here, this reservoir would have oil, two oil cans. You'd have one can of engine oil, one can of uh, valve oil. Here is the controls for the engineer. Basically, this is an automatic brake valve. This controls uh, the train this is emergency. If you have to stop in a hurry, you can't do any more than do that. You just sit there and it's in God's hands when you're going to stop, okay? Over here, you got different positions. As you see, there's knots here. This applies. This holds the leakage. This is the engine brakes. If you're just switching with the engine, this is engine brakes. This here. This is a throttle. And uh, the further you bring it back, the faster you're going to go. This is what they call a Johnson bar right here. That goes forward, backwards, and also puts you in uh, in gear. If you if you don't like the fireman, you put it all the way to the you notch it up all the way to the front, and he's going to have to work with a lot of coal. Otherwise, you center the center. The faster you go, the closer to center you are, and you're really efficient. Okay, a good engineer could burn a lot less coal than a poor engineer. Cause see, some guys get lazy and notch it up, and you just leave it there. Okay, this is a Sanders. Uh, steam engine was especially bad because if you slipped, uh, the momentum of the wheels, it, you'd lose it all. The diesel wasn't quite so bad, they just slipped a little bit. So, very important, especially uh, you get in grass, uh, you get dirt over the track, that makes it slippery and different things. Uh, there's a number of things here. Uh, before you take off, before you take off, you'd have to pull on this thing here, this valve here, and uh, Condensation into the cylinders would uh, raise hell with your uh, pistons because uh, uh, water does not compress. Okay, so you'd have to take and pull this out. And in a steamer, as they take off, you've seen it, they just sort of shoot off from the cylinders, and that's letting all the water that's in the cylinders out. And then he shuts that off, and then it's just steam from that point. Uh, this is a, a blowdown right here. Uh, the engineer's got a water gauge here, and this is a fireman's water gauge, okay? And if you want to be efficient, you just barely want to see uh, the water here, just barely. Some engineers, they get to the point in North Dakota, you had real bad water, you would want some of, the, some of the firemen didn't like to work with some of the engineers that were very efficient, because they wouldn't even see the water in the glass. The engineers be mucking around with these valves, you open these valves out, it'll tell you how much water you'd have in your boilers. See, there's a pipe at the end here. You'd open this one, 
water's coming out here so you didn't have to worry. If you didn't have water coming out of this one, then you check this one down. Water coming out, you're still pretty good. If you don't have water coming out of this valve, you can't put any more water in the boiler because you're going to blow it up and you're going to be in heaven or hell pretty quick. Because these things, when they blow up, all that's left is just the driving wheels. I've seen pictures of them after they blow, and you have two stores, there's yes. not much left. And basically, if it gets to that point where it's uh, real, that fire is white hot, and what happens if you don't have any water here, you just have to drop the grates, get rid of the, uh, all the coal that's in there, and this is the way you do that right here. Bar pulls, bar pulls out over here, you put them in there, and the grates, if you look in there, you can see the grates are open now. Take a look in there, see how they're open? When you're when you're operating, those grates are shut. And this here uh, is air controlled. You don't have to monkey around opening the firebox. This is just for long inspection. Basically, if you're running, you never have that open. Because then your fire isn't efficient. You want to have it close, you want the draft coming in through. So, it's there, it needs a little grease, otherwise, that's your shot. This is a stoker, but uh, we had what they call hand bombers, where you have to shovel coal. And basically, what you do every time you, you scoop, you just go like this, like that. And then you'd step on this at the same time, but you wouldn't just shovel this way. You're wasting energy or putting brakes on. How you have to handle it, you hit like that, and when you hit this, the coal spreads all over off the shovel. And the fireman basically would be here, brakeman would sit here, and this is what you'd see. You wouldn't see much. If you, if you just take a look out that window, the engineer don't see much. You can't see anything on the opposite side. The new diesels now, it's like driving a car, you can see all over the front. But here you have to just see on one side and then the fireman saw something. Yeah, he could control the whistle, he could control the uh, bells. Can you imagine it's 30 below and you've got exposed pipes all the way around and you've got to have them all open. All the things you'd have to keep in track. All these valves have controls and a lot of them are just for use in winter time. Uh, this here shows a water level in the tank, more or less. And, uh, it, this would be lit up here. That light over there, so you'd have lights on the winter time. Or uh, in, in the night, you could always see how much water you had. Most of the time, you so just like to see a little bob. If you had the water up here, it, it wouldn't be, it's like uh, boiling water. A little water in the kettle, uh, you get more steam for the heat you get. If you get a whole kettle of water, you're not boiling steam as you would on just a little so they just wanted to see a little water bomb all the time. This up here, this is your uh, pressure uh, going to your train. This is your reservoir, your main reservoir, equalizing reservoir. This is more or less for engine brakes, just for the engine. This is for the train. Okay. And uh, legally you couldn't have more than five pounds of leakage once you set your air up, which would be on the automatic, you set it up and then you put it in a whole position like that. If you put it in this position over here, this would compensate for the leak. Okay, but if you put it over here, whatever you set, uh, you always have some leakage in the winter time, the leakage is probably double what it would be in the summertime because the uh, air hoses, they have connections of rubber between them, the rubber gets stiff and stuff. Uh, it was a big hassle in the winter time sometimes. In the summertime you would go with 120 cars and 150 and no problem. In the wintertime sometimes uh, the longest train you can handle is 60 cars. It's about 30 below. Brake system on trains, once you pump or uh, charge up the brake system, it's the air in the system that keeps the brakes off. So for him to stop the train, he draws off a few pounds and the brakes set up that much. To put an emergency, you open it all the way and all the air escapes and all the brakes of the train come on. That's the safety feature. If the train breaks in two and you lose all the air, all the brakes go on. Some of the guys that have a pocket full of flax and if they got uh, a cinder in the eye, they put a flax seed or two mm -hmm. and they are slippery and, and they sort of worked that. It would help get that cinder out. The cinder would be sharp and it would be just feeling 
Mass City Rally. On one trip, I remember I was working in North Dakota, uh, out of Enron in North Dakota, and I got one center in the eye, so I'm working with one, one eyeball, doing all that I'm supposed to do, and all of a sudden I got two centers in the eye, and I'm legally blind up there. And I never forget that awful feeling, I'll never forget that. And you, what you do, you just sort of bring your eyelid over and trying to catch that cinder and stuff, and you finally got one eye so I can see it going on, but not a good feeling. The thing about these caps now, crew comfort, as we were standing, this is the way it normally is during the summer, most of the year, or during the, the warmer season of the year. You get a rainstorm or whatever, you have no protection. It's going to rain right in. Winter time, all they did was put canvas across from that hung down and another canvas across the top and that's all you have to keep the snow out or and in the summer as they say there was nothing so if it's a good driving rain it got wet in here